Chromatic aberration is when a lens focuses different colors differently, resulting in color fringing. We're going to use After Effects to recreate this optical color separation, which can be used to add a subtle look to emulate lens effects, match different lenses or elements to existing footage, or even stylize video and motion graphics. Start by creating a new comp. In this case, 1080. Change my frame rate, and 30 seconds is good enough. So I have all my footage edited how I want it. Because I'm using an image that is uniform across the entire canvas, that really allows me to see exactly how I'm distorting the footage. And then I have all these other footage samples throughout so that I can see exactly what's going on in the context of actual pictures. So I'm going to pre-compose the footage to make it easier to work with. Plus, if I want to change it in the future, I only have to change it in one place. The first thing we need to do is separate the footage into its red, green, and blue channels. First add the shift channels effect and set it to only use the red channel by changing green and blue to full off. Next we'll duplicate the layer twice and do the same thing for green and blue, setting the color channel you are preserving to the correct color and setting the other two to full off. It can get a little confusing, so make sure the layer you're working on is the only one visible to make it easier to verify you're setting the channels correctly. Once we have the red, green, and blue layers set up, we'll rename them so we know which is which. Next, we'll set the blending mode of the top two layers to add. If you don't see it, right-click on the column header and enable modes. And then we change it to add. Now, at this point, it should look like nothing's happened to your footage. But by separating out the color channels, we can now distort each channel separately. Here's an example of what we're trying to recreate, filmed with an anamorphic adapter for a phone. Because the light in the lens splits unevenly, we'll need to distort the image in a lens-like way, which means the effect will be stronger the closer you get to the edge of the lens, and will bend rather than just scale. To do this, we'll add the optics compensation effect to the red layer. Set the field of view orientation to diagonal, and we'll set the field of view to 12. You can experiment with this number to increase or decrease the effect. Next, copy the effect and paste it onto the blue layer. If we were doing a green magenta aberration, we'd actually want to keep these two the same. But if we're going to create the more common red-blue aberration, all we need to do is check the reverse lens distortion checkbox. If you want to change this effect evenly, make sure the numbers on both instances of the optics compensation effect stay in sync. You could always pick whip one to the other or to a separate expression control to make it easier. An actual lens may distort these colors unevenly, so you don't have to keep them exactly the same. You should keep them fairly close. If your footage or graphics have a lot of hard edges and you want to soften this effect, you can add a little blur. This is optional, but it can add that little extra something that will make this effect that much better, especially if you're stylizing motion graphics. Add an instance of CC Radial Blur to the red layer. Change type to Fading Zoom and set the amount. Because we're shrinking the red layer, we want to change this to a negative amount. In this case, we'll change it to minus one. Copy this effect to the blue layer and simply change the number to be positive. Because a little blur goes a long way, even if you distort the other layers unevenly, you'll probably want these numbers to stay about the same and you'll want to keep them at fairly small values. Once you've done all this, you may want to scale up your footage ever so slightly so you can avoid having any edges that are missing one color channel because of the red layer, which shrinks a little. Alternatively, you may be able to fill in the gap using the CC Repetile effect, but depending on your footage, this may or may not work that well. If you really want to customize it, wire up the effects to some expression control so you can easily customize the look or play around with it to get exactly what you're looking for. You could even add some extra effects or controls to change exactly what this effect will do. At this point, I like to take a look at the test footage so I can see how strong the effect is. You'll notice the effect is stronger on the outer parts of the image, especially where there's a transition from light to dark. But overall, it may not be as noticeable as it was on our test grid. I like to make small tweaks to the numbers if I need to adjust anything. 
This is your basic red-blue chromatic aberration. You can mix it up by changing what colors are affected, or even get more advanced by breaking up layers into other colors altogether. If you're using chromatic aberration as part of emulating different film or video formats, or matching visual effects elements to the plate they're being composited into, you should keep this effect fairly subtle. Or you could really push it to stylize motion graphics footage, or by adding other effects to the mix as well. You can also create a different optical aberration by watching this tutorial. 